morning, everyone, and welcome to Catawba United Methodist Church. Those of you who are here and those of you who are, who are, are with us uh, via social media. Uh, I don't see any visitors, but if you, if you please, please invite your friends to come visit with us and, and have them fill out a visitor card that we have out there in the narthex. As you know, this is Memorial Day weekend. And as we gather together, we share an appreciation for the freedom that we have and recognize the great sacrifices of the many who have made our freedom possible. We'll go through a, some announcements here. Uh, the newsletters, the June newsletters are out in the narthex on the table. Please pick one up and mark your name off the list if you're a member. And, and if you are a visitor, pick one up and take it with you. We have some announcements in the handout, the worship service handout, and if you'll take a look at those, the ones that I'd like to mention are the uh, request we have from Catawba Elementary Summer School to help them with supplies, and next Sunday will be the last Sunday for us to collect those, so if you have those, please bring those in. I believe they have asked for such things as notepads and writing pads and pencils and crayons and and erasers, and pencil sharpeners, and child-friendly scissors. The church office is closed tomorrow, Monday, for Memorial Day. And on next Sunday, June the 5th, there's a United Methodist Men's Meeting, and I'm not sure, but I believe that's at 7.30. 7, 7, 7. June the 12th is Graduation Sunday, and it will also be a Communion Sunday for us because Pastor Kim will be away on June the 5th. Are there any more announcements? Will you please stand as we... Uh, Read the call to worship, and we'll do this responsibly. And your response will be the bold print on the screen. Blessings on you all this day from our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day of his ascension. He is seated on the right hand of God. Honor, power, glory, and majesty are his. Let us praise him with shouts of joy. We are called to be witnesses to this great wonder. We are called to proclaim God's good news of love for all God's people. Amen. Our first hymn is hymn number 130, and the title is God Will Take Care of You. And as we sing this, let's sing this for the people of Uvalde, Texas, because they need the love of all Christians from all over the world and all over this country to get through the pain that they've experienced this week from the tragedy that they've experienced. And we are going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4. <laughs>
opening prayer will be on the screen and we will we will read this together. Let's bow our head. Oh God, we are, we are one with you. you. You have made us one with you. You have taught us that if we are open to one another, you dwell in us. Help us to preserve this openness and to fight for it with all our hearts. Help us to realize that there can be no understanding where there is mutual rejection. O oh God, in accepting one another wholeheartedly, fully, completely, we accept you and we thank you and we adore you and we love you with our whole being because our being is in your spirit our spirit is rooted in your spirit fill us then with love and let us be bound together with love as we go our diverse ways in this one spirit that makes you present in the world and makes you witness to the ultimate reality that is love. Love has overcome. Love is victorious. Let's continue with the Lord's Prayer. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Young Christian time today. If, you, uh, if the young Christians will come forward, Amanda's going to do that for us today. today because we're going to learn something, okay? Um, but my first question is, with the raise of hands, who's played Simon Says? Okay. So have you ever played a game where you, like, copied or mimicked somebody, what they were doing and saying? Have y'all ever done that? Yes, no? Well, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to stand up, and when I say go, I'll say or do something and then y'all need to do the exact same thing after I say or do it, okay? Well, stand up. Okay, so, raise your hand. Go, sorry. All right, got your hand up, okay. Now, this is a hand. Say it. It has 26, bo 27 bones in it. This is a foot. This is a foot. It has 26 bones in it. Okay. And this is our body. And this is our body. And it has 206 bones. Yeah, 206 bones in it. Okay, y'all did great. Y'all can sit down. Alright, so if we add it up, both our hands and both our feet, that would be 106 bones. So, half the bones in our body, a little over half the bones in our body, are located in our hands and our feet. So, see, y'all learned something today. Um, so, um, but this is how, this, this mimicking, this, this copying, is how Jesus taught the disciples. They copied him. Not by, like we did with bones in our hands and feet, but how to interact and talk with God. And then the disciples went out and taught others how to do the same thing. And, you know, we all do this. We, um, uh, we do it, um, we do this every day when we mimic Jesus' 
love and action for others. And we go out and that helps make us better examples to other people around us so that they can know Jesus' love and um, grace and mercy and abundance and healing. Um, so let's have our prayer. Ready? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Please help us to copy his words and his actions so that we can better know you and then serve and share your peace and love with others. Amen. All right, guys, don't forget, on the 12th, we're going to have our year in, bring a friend. We're going to do some fun stuff, okay? operating a little bit with reduced staff here so we don't have an ushering team but at this time we're going to bring the offering plate forward and please stand as we as we bring the offerings to the altar scripture today is from the book of John 17 verse 20 through 26 I do not pray for these only but also for those who believe in me through their word that they may all be one even as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The glory which thou hast given me, I have given to them, that they may be even one as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may become, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them even as thou hast loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom thou hast given me, may be with me where I am, to behold my glory, which thou hast given me in thy love for me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and those know that thou hast sent me. I made known to them thy name, and I will make it known that the love which thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Uh, I'd like to take a moment with you before we pray together. Um, as you well know, a uh, very tragic happened last week in um, Uvalde, Texas. Nineteen children and two teachers were unfortunately gone down. So it's tragic. I hope uh, this never happened again in this country. Uh, please pray for the comfort of the victims and their families. And please pray that something like this will never happen again in this country. Uh, we need to pray for the wisdom of the leaders 
of this country so that uh, they can prevent this kind of tragedy uh, from ever happening again. Um, uh, we also want to remember that this week is all about uh, it's all about what people they have uh, they give the ultimate sacrifice so that you and I might have the freedom to go travel and uh, sit on the beach or barbecue in the backyard. So please do remember and commemorate the meaning of the Memorial Day. And please, uh, as usual, please pray for the sick members of the church whose names are in the church bulletin. Um, and I want to let you know, my family will be on vacation starting tomorrow through following Wednesday. Uh, next, so next week, uh, Tom uh, will deliver the sermon for the worship service. Uh, thank you, Tom. And please do not preach it better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you're a you're really good preacher. <laughs> uh, everyone, take care of yourself during this week uh, while I'm away. I will miss you. And let's keep praying for each other. Uh, please join me in prayer. Lord uh, God, our hearts are broken with pain as we hear again of death and despair caused by gun violence. We ask, O oh Lord, that you comfort those families wounded by a tragedy in Uvalde, Texas. Give them your peace, not as the word give it not from their current circumstances, but that can only come from you. May they feel your loving arms uh, wrapped around them. May they feel your presence in their anger, weeping, and bitter sorrow. And we also pray for our governments, uh, world leaders, and authority figures. Lord, give them wisdom and strength to do all they reasonably can to prevent more violent act. Inspire them to do all they can in an effort to reduce gun violence. Please protect and guide the direction of our nation in your wisdom and grace. Dear God, we thank you for the freedom you have given to us and for the price that was paid by Christ so that we could live free. We remember today the cost of it all, the great sacrifice for freedom. We thank you for the brave men and women who have fought and continue to fight so courageously for our nation. Uh, we ask for your covering and blessing over them and their families. We pray that you would be gracious and encircle them with your peace. We pray for your great favor and goodness to be evidence in their lives. Please be with all uh, those who wear the uniform, who serve our communities and nation every single day. We ask that you provide your protection, that you would be their guiding force who leads the way and their rare God who keeps them safe from behind. Please keep them safe and secure in your abundant grace. Gracious God, we pray that you bring relief to our sick friends in the church bulletin. We ask that you help heal them and bring back their strength. They feel powerless, God, but you are ever powerful. I pray that, we pray that, you give them comfort and strength in the knowledge that while they are weak, you are strong. There is nothing too big for you to handle. You, are, you guide the sickness out of their body. You are the great healer, and we have total faith that you please be with 
us from the beginning to the end of the worship service. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, I would like to share the message under the title of May We Be One. Uh, John chapter 17 is the prayer of Jesus. In chapter 17 verse 1, we can see Jesus praying. He looks toward heaven and prays. After this prayer, Judas Iscariot will come to Jesus to sell him to the Jews. He does not come alone, but with armed soldier, religious leaders, and their minions. Jesus will be arrested by their soldier. Jesus knows that due to the betrayer of his own disciples, uh, he will be arrested and taken away. Just ahead of this situation, <clears throat> Jesus is praying to God. For whom does Jesus pray in the face of his coming suffering? Let's look at verse 20 together. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. First, Jesus prays for his disciples and he prays for those who will come to believe through the preaching of the gospel in the future. That is, he is praying for us today. Through today's scripture, I would like to share what Jesus prayed for us and what lessons we can learn from Jesus' prayer. Jesus prays for his disciples and for us to be united in verse 21. Let's look at verse 21. Uh, that, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. Uh, Jesus first prays for the unity of believers. Uh, during Jesus' public life, his disciples compete with each other to take up a greater, take up a greater superiority and leadership among themselves. They each wanted to be in a higher position than the others. Such travel between disciples appears in many places in the Bible. In Mark uh, chapter 9, verse 34, it says, but they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. John's mother even asks Jesus to let her two sons sit in a supreme seat in the kingdom of God. Jesus is well aware of the competitive relationship of his disciples who are not unity, who are not united. So Jesus teaches about humility by washing his disciples' feet in John chapter 13. Because the community of faith is humbled by each other, it, can, it cannot be achieved without serving each other. Ahead of his death, Jesus asks through prayer to become one with his twelve disciples and he prays for us as future disciples. Jesus was well aware that we have universal human natures that assert our superiority over each other just like his disciples did. Jesus is also telling us how we can become one. Jesus knows that it is impossible for us to become united by our own strength. So Jesus also talks about the principle of unity in the verse uh, 20 to 21. Um, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you. 
just as Jesus himself became one by abiding in God the Father, so Jesus is also praying for us to be one by abiding Him, abiding in Him. This prayer tells us that we can become one through faith with, uh, when we live with Christ as the head and Lord of our lives. It is a message to acknowledge and let Jesus reign in our lives. In fact, it's not easy for unbelievers to become truly one among themselves because the master of their lives is their, is their desire, not the Lord, like a Christian, like a believer. The master of their lives are power, money, and some other material things. They do not dwell in the Lord. They are people who do not recognize God's protection and reign in their lives. Um, because they are the master of their own lives, they live to secure their future through their abilities. Their goal, their goal in life is a worldly success that has nothing to do with the Lord. As a result, they do not trust people. It is easy for them to treat others impersonally as a way to complete their goals. Therefore, uh, they cannot enjoy the joy and freedom of being united in the Lord with the others. That is why people are in trouble because they do not have peace of mind and are trying to overcome pain in their souls. Christians treat each other with respect and dignity. And we live by the principle of loving each other. Uh, we may not agree on everything, but we share in love of Christ. The motive is the love of Christ, and the goal is for the kingdom of God. Through this relationship, we comfort, encourage, and support each other's lives. Christians recognize Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives that, and become one in Him. This is believers' privilege and source of our gratitude. So what makes it possible for us to abide in the Lord and become one. Being united in the Lord is made possible because of the glory that Jesus has given us. In verse 22, I have, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Putting on the glory of Jesus Christ mentioned in verse 22 means that we first receive forgiveness of our sins. We live in gratitude to God who forgives our sins and accepts us as God's children. And we hate the sin. We start to hate the sin. The second is to accept each other. Having received the grace of the forgiveness of sins, through Jesus Christ, we can accept and love each other with forgiving grace. When we forgive each other's sin and cover each other's faults with Christ's love, He makes us new and He makes us one in Christ Jesus. Jesus' pray for all believers in Christ is to become one in grace and forgiveness given through the cross. I pray that you will become one with your family and friends around you. Then why is it important for Christians to be united as one? Let's look at verse 23 together. Uh, could you read it together, please? Ready, go. I in them, and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. 
there is an effect that arises when we become united with one another in Christ today. There are actually two influences. One is for ourselves and the other is for our neighbors. First, we realize deeply that Christ loves us. We experience the practical example of Christ through the members of the church. Through the model of Christ in the church, we become realize the love of uh, Jesus Christ. Through this, the love of Christ is fulfilled in the church. And secondly, the world will know the love of the Father through us. When we realize the love of the Lord and become one in Christ, the world will see that we are united by love in Christ. Unbelievers will then come to know the love of Christ. We become one community in the church where we live uh, acknowledging Jesus as the Lord, our lives. We can accept each other despite each other's fault. We can communicate and love each other. Uh, I prefer to eat with believers more than eating expensive food in the good and fancy restaurant. I, found, uh, I find the love among other believers while I have fellowship. It is possible because we together acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. My family and I from South Korea, which is not familiar with our uh, Katawa United Methodist Church. How could I have fellowship with my church members if it were not for the community where Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life? Unity in the Lord uh, through love is something that money cannot buy. Unity in church is so precious, sharing God's love. I cannot buy precious relationship with my church members, which my church congregations I love, by money. It's only possible by being unity in Christ. <coughs> we also learn what we should pray as Jesus prayed in the book of John today. We must pray for our unity in Jesus Christ. Ultimately, this is a prayer for your soul and a prayer for the church to which we belong to, the kingdom of God. Many people pray with a thirst uh, for satisfaction when they uh, satisfaction for themselves when they pray. Sometimes we pray for our greed. But Will our lives be restored through a prayer for the fulfillment of our desires? I will give you an uh, extreme example. Uh, let's say I pray to win the lottery. If that uh, prayer comes true and I win the Powerball and I uh, become a millionaire, will my life be restored? Uh, on the contrary, I bet it will ruin my life. I may end up far from the Lord. Money, power, or fame do not make us complete or perfect. Only the love of God through Jesus Christ allow us to be who we were made to be. Uh, the essence of genuine prayer is for us to love and become one in Christ, not pursuing our desire. When you fully take on the love of Christ, the world will be changed through us. The world will know that we are disciples of Christ. The world will know the love of Christ through our lives. Uh, what is the new commandment given to us by Jesus Christ? In John chapter 13, verse 34, we read, Can we read it together, please? Ready, go. 
A new covenant I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. The most positive way to proclaim Jesus to the world and restore the world is to love our neighbors the way uh, Jesus loves us. The world changes when we live a life of sacrifice, sharing, service, and acceptance. It is not political or economical economic power that changes uh, and renew the world. It is only through the love of Christ that we become one so that the world can see it and experience the love of Christ. So Jesus prayed for our unity before he died on the cross. If political power, if, if politics change the world, I will do politics. If money could change the world, I would make money. If the kingdom of God was established through the power of money and politics, the kingdom of God would have been established in the day of King Solomon. Because Solomon's wealth and political power was the greatest period in the Israel's history. However, the kingdom of God was not established by Solomon's wealth and political power. It was established and completed through the weak-looking cross of Jesus. Um, do you have more money than Solomon? Do you have more political power than David or Solomon? The kingdom of God was not made of such things. The kingdom of God is completed through the love of the cross of Jesus Christ, which is weak from the world's point of view. Please take a look the neighbor next to you. Please. <laughs> Please take a look at the neighbor. If you love the family next to you, and the members of our church next to you. That is the first and last step in building the kingdom of God. These are not the word of Pastor Kim. This is, this is the truth the Bible is telling us today. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the kingdom of God is realized when we become one through the love of Christ. And that love flows out of the church to our neighbors. The Jesus Lord prayed for us to become unity 2,000 years ago for this purpose. So I pray that the Lord's prayer will be fulfilled on the earth through all of you in this church here today. Amen. Amen. Friends, this is all said in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Let us affirm our faith as found in the Apostles', uh, Apostles Creed. Would you please write, uh, rise if you uh, if you obey, uh, if you're able? <clears throat> let us uh, let us confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of the heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the and life, life everlasting. Amen. Uh, let's uh, sing together uh, hymn number 545, which is one foundation.
God makes us one in your grace. As once loved by God, let us embrace our family and neighbors and forgive their transgressions. We believe that the kingdom of God does not come through the power of the word, but that the kingdom of God is complete through the love of Jesus Christ. Let us do what we believe in our lives, and the world will know that we are Christ's disciples. Father, as we dismiss, the peace of God the Father, the grace of Jesus the Son, the guidance and communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.